This episode of Buy Black Podcast is brought to you by Haptic Consulting. Haptic Consulting specializes in maximizing the value your organization gets from its training budget by focusing on business needs, eliminating unnecessary training development, and helping you build a culture of engagement from the executive level down. Visit www.hapticconsulting.com to learn how I can help you develop better leaders, happier employees, and a more profitable company culture. Or you can email me at gerald at hapticconsulting.com. That's G-E-R-A-L-D at hapticconsulting.com. Now let's get into the show. The term life insurance, the term lengths are created for your life. So someone who, let's say you have, you know, your kid is going to school and you pay for their loan, right? You, you, you signed off on their loan and, you know, you want to make sure if something happens, you know, you get a term policy on them for five years. They're only going to be in college for four. But hey, if you get a five year term on them, now that investment is secure. Then let's look at another scenario. Ten years down the line, your car is going to be paid off. You just got fifty thousand dollars in, in, in coverage for 10 years. That car is going to be paid off. You're good to go if anything happens to you during that time. Let's push it out even more. Twenty year term. For 20 years, your life is going to change. You're going to have more family members. You're going to, have, you know, change jobs. Maybe your income changes. All of these things in 20 years, you're not going to need as much money now than you would if something were to happen to you, you know, today. Buy Black Podcast, Episode 38. J.C. Matthews teaches us the importance of insurance to your family, your health, and leaving generational wealth. Welcome to Buy Black, the only podcast dedicated to helping you find, connect with, and support Black-owned businesses. We're on a mission to bring consumers and business owners together to ignite the global Black economy. I'm your host, Gerald Jones, and if you're a Black business owner or a socially conscious consumer, you've joined the right community. Ready? Let's get to work. Joining me for another great episode of Buy Black, your only podcast dedicated to helping you find and connect with black owned businesses. Today, you guys are going to get a dynamic interview with Mr. JC Matthews. JC is a longtime listener to the show. He reached out to me just a, a couple of weeks ago to talk about insurance. He said, Hey, have you thought about bringing anybody onto the show to talk to the community about insurance and how important it is? to helping our families to be able to move forward uh, in the event of our inevitable demise. And I, you know, I told him, I said, yes, I thought about it, but I haven't talked to the right person yet. So he came right on time. Uh, we scheduled the interview. We got together and I'm telling you, you are going to want to have your pen and paper out when you're listening to this episode because he is dropping knowledge the entire time. You may want to go back and listen to it twice. Um, so I am not going to take a lot of your time before we jump into this interview. We don't have any new reviews this week, but if you guys are out there, please definitely go out there to, to iTunes and to the other locations where you find the show and leave us your five star reviews. Also, if you haven't downloaded the app yet, if you're listening on anything other than the buy black, build the new black wall street app on your Apple or your Android phone. Please go ahead and download that app. You can do that by going to buyblackpodcast.com slash APP, and then you click on the button for your designated uh, system. All right, so that's it. I am definitely excited about this episode, which is why I'm trying to jump straight through my part, straight to get to JC's part, because I guarantee you guys are going to be as excited about this show as I am. All right, we'll catch up real shortly after the episode is over with. Let's jump right in. Hey, everybody, welcome back to Buy Black, your only podcast dedicated to helping you find and connect with black owned businesses. Last week, you guys had me on a solo episode, but this week we are joined again by one of our esteemed guests. Uh, joining me today for the show is Mr. JC Matthews. He is an insurance agent, entrepreneur, business owner, extraordinaire. And, uh, you know, JC reached out to me by email a couple of weeks ago. It was like, Hey, have you thought about talking about insurance on the show and, and how that can help people build wealth? And, uh, honestly, I had thought about it, but I hadn't connected with the right person who had that expertise. So he came in right on time, uh, working, uh, with his business out of Atlanta. 
I just want to welcome you to the show, JC. Thanks for being here with me. Thanks for welcoming me. Yep. Absolutely. So uh, as you guys know, I don't want to take too much of the time running my mouth because this is a man with all the information. So I'm going to hand it right over to you, JC. Just tell us a little bit about your background. Tell us how long you've been in the industry, how you got into it, and then we'll talk a little bit more about that. Sure. So it's actually funny. My background is I used to program artificial intelligence for video games. Um, I actually uh, taught myself how to program when I was 16, um, started working for uh, GameStop and a few game development companies. Um, so I have a very technical background. Um, but what got me into uh, insurance, the insurance industry, was my grandmother. Um, she actually passed from ovarian cancer. Uh, she had no life insurance, and, and that affected our family really, really badly. Um, you know, we were sad, we were upset, but we also were financially strapped to cover her burial. Uh, and that took me onto a road of understanding and learning that, you know, the black community as a whole has a very, very uh, un you know, a unhealthy view on insurance in general. And we were just miseducated and that made me get into life insurance. And then I realized, uh, you know, it wasn't just our community, but it was everyone that was uneducated about how insurance works. So that's kind of how I started uh, in life insurance. Okay. Dope. Yeah. And so ta oh, walk us through that. You, you started out, you said, told me the other day about a decade ago. So take us from then to now, how, how'd you get it going? So basically, um, it all started uh, with going online, getting licensed. Uh, I think a lot of people don't realize how easy it is to become licensed as an insurance agent. Uh, the process to become licensed is simply just going online, uh, you know, getting your certification, getting your, uh, your pre-certification, your 75 hours of education. Once you do that, you pretty much go to the state, you take your test. And then you get sponsored by an insurance company. Once you get sponsored by an insurance company, you're licensed is pretty much that straightforward. Um, I started out doing the door to door route um, with a few companies, but I really didn't like that idea. You know, I really liked the idea, the focus of, you know, helping people over the phone, especially uh, back when I started. That was a really, really big issue. Most people didn't trust people over the phone and most insurance agents definitely said, you know, that wasn't the route to take. Uh, however, the first company I started with, Baltimore Life, had a product that allowed customers to sign up over the phone. So that's kind of where I started. I started over the phone. And from there, I went, you know, from life insurance to health insurance. Um, I went into health insurance all the way up until uh, the Affordable Care Act went into a plan, which most people uh, refer to as Obamacare. Um, but once that hit, um, I left out of the um health insurance space and I went into the term life insurance space and the final expense insurance space. Um, final expense insurance is pretty much life insurance focused to the senior market, anyone 50 or older. Um, so from there, I focused on basically term life insurance, no final expense and focused on products that had no medical exam. Um, and that brought me to where we are today, which is uh, with Simply Insurance, which is pretty much a consumer facing uh, insurance agency that allows customers to go and sign up online uh, without thinking of an agent. And most of our products are either, you know, quick approval process or uh, immediate issue. Uh, so that's kind of how we got from, you know, starting to where we are today. Absolutely. And, and that's really interesting. So when we talked the other day, you were talking to me about Simply Insurance and how everything is set up online and how unique that is. So can you talk a little bit more about that? Um, kind of the traditional ways that people normally go about getting insurance as opposed to the process that you've got with Simply Insurance and, and kind of how you're modernizing the, uh, uh, the customer facing, facing side of the insurance game. Absolutely. So traditionally, when you go to purchase life insurance, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to go online. You know, you're going to look at a few quotes online. You're going to put in your information and then you're going to start getting phone calls extremely fast. Um, I don't think most people realize that once you put your information online, you're going to get called. You know, as an agent doing this, you know, I, I always try to call you within 30 seconds of receiving your phone number. And I knew that if I didn't get you, I would probably never get you just because you're probably going to, get, you know, get 100, 
maybe 200 phone calls in one week about getting coverage. Uh, and the reason this happens is because when you go online, every website you get a quote from, most of the time sells their leads multiple times to multiple agents. So what's happening is that you're going to five sites, you get five quotes, but your information is sent to over, you know, 70, 80 to 100 agents all ready to call you, all ready to give you coverage. OK, once you finally decide, and you know, get through the headache of actually, you know, dealing with all these phone calls, if you decide to go with an agent, you're going to start the application process. Now, traditionally, life insurance applications have a turnaround time of around 75 days. Now, that's pretty shocking to hear, but most people don't understand that there's a process. You know, once you complete the application, the insurance agent is going to submit it to the insurance carrier who's then going to take it through a process called underwriting. That's basically where the insurance company says, hey, is this person healthy enough? You know, are they, uh, you know, good enough for our specific product for us to issue insurance on them, you know, without us, you know, risking everything from day one. Uh, so the underwriting process is what's going to take the longest, you know, getting your medical exam completed, getting your medical records completed, you know, the medical exam part is no cost to any customer. The insurance companies cover that. They actually send the examiner out to you. But scheduling that takes time. Getting your medical records from your doctor takes time. They pull a prescription drug report. They also pull your motor vehicle report. So it's just a lot of reports that are pulled. And then normally it takes about, let's say, anywhere, you know, from four to five weeks to get that data back. Then it's any back and forth with the agent. So you really can get into a long process, you know, and unfortunately, a lot of customers drop off in this process because it takes so long and they sometimes they never even hear back from the agent or they don't remember what agent they, you know, went with because so many people called them. So they just stop the process altogether, which is, you know, it's, it's very unfortunate, but it happens a lot. Mm -hmm. So, once you go through that process and you actually get an approval, um, most of the time people end up being angry because they feel like they've been, you know, put through a bait and switch. And the reason that happens is because most of the times when you're dealing with an agent, we can only give you what's called field underwriting. And that's basically our experience of, you know, how someone gets approved. So, you know, if, if we say, OK, well, I'm, you know, I'm going to apply for coverage and. You know, Gerald, you told me, you know, you're taking prescriptions for high blood pressure and X, Y and Z. Those things, based on my knowledge, we, we can get you approved and you'll probably be approved at this rating. But when the insurance company does their research, they come back and they say, hey, he actually is a little bit more at this rating than he was at this rating. Or sometimes they come back and you're at a better rating, but that changes the price. Okay. Mm -hmm. So imagine going through, you know, three months of waiting. You finally get the answer and it's, oh, well, you know, we can cover you, but it's twenty dollars more per month than you planned for. Right. So, of course, anybody would get upset with that. Anybody would feel like, oh, you know. They're going back and forth in this kind of a game, uh, but but that's not what's actually happening. Um, it's just kind of the way the process is set up. So that's what happens traditionally. And most people actually end up you know, going with the rate that they're given at the end just because they simply don't want to go through the process again. Mm -hmm. They'd rather pay that, you know, twenty dollars more than actually have to go through this ever again, you know, and so. The process with Simply Insurance, the thing that makes us different is that our product bypasses a lot of that. We have most of our insurance carriers are A-rated carriers, um, and that's through a company called AM Best. AM Best rates all the insurance companies in regards to their financial strength, and that's what that A-rating means. It just means they're very strong financially and that they're, you know, really, they should basically be good at paying claims out. You shouldn't have to worry about them. Mm -hmm. And we have what's called a straight through process where customers basically can go online. They can get a quote on our website, click through directly to the insurance carrier's website, apply online, answer everything online, submit everything online. And most of our products give an immediate approval, an instant decision, or they give you the ability to have the product, you know, like with, for instance, dental coverage, you know, if you sign up for it, it's just yours. You don't have to get approved for it. Mm -hmm. uh, but, in regards to life insurance, it's a very straight process because we have carriers that give us the ability to say, hey, you've been approved now. Your policy is in the mail or, hey, you re you've been medically approved based on your your prescription drug check. But we still want to do a exam 
examiner will call you tomorrow, right? Or, hey, you know, we can't make any decision until you get an exam. But the reason why these processes are faster online is because they have everything they need. All the thing they're waiting on is exam from the insurance carrier and they're, and they're able to pull your medical records, your prescription drug checks, all of those things and your motor vehicle report all at one time. So when your medical records come in from the exam, you normally can have an answer within one week to two weeks. Wow. So it's a much faster process. And our focus is only going to be on carriers like that. So right now in the insurance, life insurance industry, especially, um, the technology that's coming in is extremely new. Most of the insurance companies that we work with are backed by, you know, huge companies that have been around for over hundreds of years. Um, however, the technology is extremely new. Um, t- so most people don't even realize that it exists. And more and more insurance companies are creating these, I would say, branches of, you know, insurance policies that are more focused on the technology side. Mm-hmm. And so that's pretty much what we will, you know, we offer on Simply Insurance. So if you come to our site, you don't have to worry about dealing with an agent if you don't want to. And you can get coverage, sign up online and, you know, pretty much do everything on your own time. That's hands off. You don't have to worry about phone calls. We don't need any identifying information to actually give you quotes outside of the basic information, which is like your date of birth, you know, your you know gender, male or female, you know. And, you know, if you're a tobacco user, those are the pretty much the three things that we need. And, you know, of course, what 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 quote you want. But that's all we need to actually give you a quote. That is really cool. <clears throat> that's really cool. So uh, I like that kind of 21st century approach to insurance because, you know, every industry is, is finally kind of coming around and saying, oh, this Internet thing is not going away. I guess we should start using it. So I think it's really cool that, that your business is kind of out front on the industry on that. And, and helping people get through that insurance process a lot faster. And it's black owned people. So uh, just throwing <laughs> that out there. Um, yeah. But <laughs> um, I, I want to get into some of this education content that you were going to bring to us, because, you know, when you reached out to me via email, it, it was definitely from a point of concern um, on your end of, you know, I want to educate people a lot more about, you know, the value that insurance brings and and the pain that it can you know, bring when you don't have it. And um, so let's jump directly into the first component of this. You talked a little bit earlier about, you know, like dental plans. That's one of the things that you guys offer. Uh, when we talked last week, you said there there were three main types of insurance that people need that they overlook and they don't have. So talk to us a little bit about those three, um, why it is that it's so important that people need it, and, and maybe even some of the reasons that you think people over overlook it. And, and how we can help them stop doing that. Sure thing. So the first proponent, of, it is definitely, you know, the first option that I will look at is life insurance. Life insurance is one of the biggest products out there that most people lack. You know, it's odd. You know, there's been so many studies that have shown, you know, people would rather do taxes. People would rather, you know, give up their first child, you know, so many, you know, surveys then actually purchase life insurance. Um, part of it is because of the process. Um, but another part of it is just because of the lack of education. But it is extremely important to purchase life insurance. And the reason is, is because if you don't have life insurance, you're opening your family up for very, very uh, basically vague financial future, you know, they're not going to know what to expect if you were to pass away, if they were to lose that complete income uh, that you were bringing in. So a lot of times when we're looking at buying life insurance, we're thinking of it in a process, like I told you, where we're buying it for ourselves. Um, And that's a very big wrong way to look at this. When you buy life insurance, you're purchasing life insurance for the people that you leave behind. Uh, and and that's very important to look at because you want to always make sure that if you're leaving someone behind, you're leaving them off in a better position. You don't have to make them wealthy, but you're just leaving them in a better position than you did when you were here. And that's pretty much the most important premise of life insurance. And, you know, I'll give you an example. Like I talked about earlier with my grandmother passing, you know, it, it was it was tough, you know, 
funeral expenses, you know, easily $13,000. I think it was $13,876. Wow. Uh, that it came out to. And that's in Georgia. You know, the average burial costs anywhere between eight to $10,000 just to bury someone. Uh, uh, a, um, you can get like a cremation for maybe around 5,000, you know, and this is the nation average is more or less depending on where you live. Um, but that's just on that level. You know, imagine, you know, a family of four, you know, and your partner doesn't get life insurance. They pass away. You know, I've, I've seen it so many times. People pass away and they're not prepared because they think, Oh, I have so much time to get it. Well, now, you know, a mother of two children, she doesn't have that of uh, that income coming in anymore mm-hmm. and she, on top of that you know she just lost someone that she loved and the kids have lost someone that they love but now what's in jeopardy what's in jeopardy is that they probably didn't pay off the home right so they're in a position they just got a new home they have no life insurance she's still gonna have to figure out how to pay for the home the children's the education fund is no longer being grown so now Will the children even be able to go to college? And if they can go to college, will it really be the college they want to go to? Maybe they were planning for private school. Can they even do that anymore because that income is gone? You know, it is so many things that we don't look at on a day to day basis. Can the car notes be paid? You know, what's going to happen? Are you going to have to move into a whole new level of existence just because you didn't really take a little bit of time and pay that 20 or 30 dollars a month for life insurance? I mean, it is so important that everyone has it because at the end of the day, one thing is for sure, regardless of, we, of you know wanting to hear it or not, everyone is going to die. Mm-hmm. When we die, we don't know, but we need to prepare ourselves for it. And I think a lot of us are afraid to talk about death. And that's the reason why another reason why most people don't even like talking about life insurance, because for them, it means that they're talking about dying. But the truth of the matter is we have to change the tone of the conversation. It's no longer actually talking about dying. It's actually talking about the protection of your family's financial future. And that's how life insurance should be looked at. It shouldn't be looked at like, oh, this is, you know, for when I die. No, no, this is to make sure that whatever investments you're putting into your life and into your family, that they're being protected in the future. Because I can assure you that I've seen both ways. I've seen it both ways. I I've seen it where customers have no life insurance and I've seen it where my clients have had life insurance. Mm -hmm. Um, I I had one client, he called me and he said, Hey, you know what? Um, I know I stopped paying on a life insurance policy. My mom had passed and I was just going through her things and I didn't even remember that she had this policy. And it was a $50,000 insurance policy. And it completely changed everything because he was about to sell the home. You know, he was about to have to move, you know, because he lived with his grandmother. And it was just a lot of things that took the weight off of him. And he called me, He, you know, he was just talking to me about it. And he was just so thankful. And I told him, hey, you know, thank your grandmother. You know, don't thank me. You know, that's, you know, she's the one who did that for you. Right. And, you know, I've I've had customers call me where, you know, they're like, hey, you know, I have your information here. And, you know. I'm just calling about my dad's insurance policy and I have to tell him, Hey, unfortunately, yes, I did speak to your dad about life insurance. I did speak to him about getting a policy started, but he never went through with it. So they have no coverage and nothing ever happened, you know, and that's a hard thing to tell someone that's thinking, okay, you know, I'm going to have something here, but there actually isn't anything there. So I think that's an important part to think about and to also look at a lot of times people think they can save, you know, that's a big factor. You know, people say, okay, well, I could just save this. Well, you know, I just want to throw a fact out there for anyone who doesn't know, but the average person doesn't have $3,000 in savings in their bank account. So to think that you're going to save the amount of money that's required to cover your financial expenses is kind of, it's kind of ridiculous. It's it's crazy. I'm just going to say it like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and that's just based on the average person and most of us who buy life insurance are average people. You know, that's what we have to remember. It's not a instrument for the wealthy to get wealthier. You know, most wealthy people don't need life insurance and that's just the truth. Um, they use other investments. Whereas for, you know, us average people, we need to make sure that we cover our finances because if we take someone who makes $75,000 a year and they pass away, 
just think about this. This is this is the way you have to think about it. If someone making seventy five thousand dollars a year, they're the head of the household for their family and they pass away. That's seventy five thousand dollars a year that is gone. That's completely wiped out. That's no longer coming. OK, yeah. now. How long would your family need that seventy five thousand dollars a year to be good? And that's what you have to look at. You know, I always tell them, I always tell everybody you need to get 20 times your annual income with life insurance because that's, you know, with 75,000 a year, that would be $1.5 million in coverage. But when it sounds like a lot, but it really isn't. The average home is what somewhere around 200, $250,000. Mm-hmm. That's, you know, that, that takes that away. You know, college tuition, you know, they say that at, on average, you're going to spend a million dollars per child over their 18, you know, by the time they turn 18. You know, so all these factors that we look at, even though 1.5 million sounds like a lot, it's not a lot to change your life dramatically, but it's a lot to take care of things that you need to, you know, financially prepare yourself for maybe having to go back into the workforce if you were, a, you know, a, a non-working parent, you know, or a stay-at-home parent, or maybe you have to go back to school now because you need to earn more income for your family to survive, but having that you know, cushion of 20 times someone's annual income versus no income right. is a complete uh, difference. So life insurance is the most important one of all of these. If you can only really afford to get one, I would definitely get life insurance because it's something that, you know, it, it, it changes the life of the people you leave behind. And, you know, when you leave people behind, it doesn't you you go away, you know, your, your concerns, your worries, they all go away, but the concerns and worries that the people you leave behind don't, and it's not a good idea to leave them with any financial baggage of, you know, maybe a home that has to be paid off or a car note or credit or uh, student loans, you know, that maybe you have your name on or any of those things. Right. And that's absolutely huge too, because just thinking about let's go with the positive side of this, right? I just lost mm-hmm. somebody that I love and I'm trying to deal with all of that. But in the midst of trying to process all of that, um, we, we can pay off the home. We can pay off any vehicles. We can pay off any loans that we had and basically begin a debt free. And this is assuming that you got that 20, you know, that 20 times your annual income life insurance. You know, you can, you can pay off all of those things. And then now I'm dealing with grieving and I'm dealing with starting over, but I'm starting over either with a fresh slate or with a little bit of a cushion behind me so that I don't have to stress more. That's correct. Is this really what you're talking about right there? Yes, absolutely. A hundred percent. Yeah. So I'm going to throw a devil's advocate question in here for you that I am quite certain that you get a lot. Uh, and I, I got to be honest, I am one of the people who falls in this trap right now. I know the real answer to it, but it's still hard to get up off your butt and change things when it's so easy. So I'm going to ask this question. Yeah, but um, JC, I got a great job. My job offers me life insurance. I've got the life insurance that I need to cover Exactly what you're talking about, that that 20 times your income. I, I got that. I got that in the bank. So why do I need to go out and buy life insurance in the in the in the market? Why would I come get it from you when I'm getting it from my business? Sure. So <clears throat> that's a really good question. So I'm going to hit you with a few things. So the first thing is that the income, the amount of life insurance that you get from any employer is only going to be one times your annual income. OK, so and that life insurance does not go with you if you're fired. So if you fired, if you quit, if anything happens, if you're laid off, the life insurance does not go with you. I always recommend having a separate life insurance policy from a workplace policy. And and that, that happens all the time. I get customers all the time. They call me and say, hey, you know, I, I, we had life insurance. You know, we were with the railroad for 30 years and we had life insurance. However, it doesn't come with us and we thought we could take it. What do we do? Now they're in a position where They've gone 30 years with one type of coverage and they no longer have it. And now it's even more expensive on a month to month basis for them to get life insurance. So with the affordability of life insurance, especially when you're younger, because, you know, the younger you are, the more affordable your rates are going to be. Go for getting you a life insurance policy when you're young. That's outside of your employer, because 
we don't know, especially millennials, you know, we don't know, you know, at any given time where we're going to be as far as, you know, employment or, you know, if we decide to become a freelancer or, you know, if we switch jobs, you know, that's that's the first thing. So it's great that you have that coverage through your employer, but you definitely need to get more than what one times your annual income. Um, and you definitely need to have something that's separate from your job in case you ever quit or you ever leave. In regards to having the amount of money, let's say you have one point five million dollars in a bank and you know your family is going to be taken care of um, in pretty much every state almost. And I think it's like only one or two um, life insurance is tax free. OK, so that's a big thing. And it in most states, it also bypasses probate um, with assets in a bank. They're definitely going to probate. All right. So um, it, if you don't understand what probate is, it's basically a process that the courts take the money through to make sure it belongs to who, you know, who, whoever says it belongs to them, that, that they get it. So that part of the process, you don't want to put your family through. You want to put your family through a process of fast money because what they're about to go through is going to be extremely hard. So, you know, I always recommend, you know, speaking to a tax attorney in regards to your specific state, because it is state specific in regards to how life insurance um, pays out. But in most cases, in majority of cases is tax free. So that's a very big benefit, especially when it comes to having uh, money, as well as when you have cash on hand. It's great if you have that amount of money in the bank. But your family still needs to survive. And that's what a lot of people don't understand is that if you have one point five million dollars in the bank, your family is living a lifestyle based on that. So that's what everyone has to remember, that if you save one point five million, whatever amount of money you're making, you need to have that available in insurance 20 times it. And I say 20 times. The average is actually only 10. But I always say 20 because I say, hey. Why not do 20? Why not do 20 years of income? Because that's how I look at it. Right. So it's a good thing of, you know, it's great if someone has the income, but let's think about where, how it's going to affect your children's future, how it's going to affect your spouse's future. Those things are the important things. And if you don't think about those things and you only think about the now, if you do pass away, those funds will drop quickly because your income goes away 100%. Mm -hmm. So, hey, you know, you might have that money in there, but it's not going to keep growing. It's going to start being depleted. And another important factor to think about um, with that is how are these how are these funds that you had in the savings going to be affected with your passing if you don't have anything, any additional you know, coverage to go in there and, you know, kind of alleviate the drainage of these funds with any type of final expenses burials and debts. Perfect. I love it. So just to be clear, everybody out there in podcast land, don't come trying to find my house. I don't have a, a million and a half dollars sitting in the bank. All right. I was devil's <laughs> advocate and uh, devil's advocate that thing. All right. So, so we good over here, but now um, in, in, in all actuality, uh, the, another component of what you said, and uh, you kind of, you, you hit it, but I'm just going to say it outright. You know, a lot of people don't, Pay attention to the fact that let's just say that you do have a great job and you're with that job for 20 years, right? And you got insurance through them this whole time. And you go from, say, being, you know, 30 years old when you get this job and you're 50 when you leave the job, right? And now you're 50 years old trying to go out for the first time to buy life insurance out in the market with 50 year old health when you could have bought that insurance at with 30 year old health right and so if you're looking to get that same amount of coverage at 20 times your income coverage at 50 versus 30 and you kind of mentioned this it's gonna be a whole lot more expensive for you to do that you may end up not being able to get that much coverage because you just can't afford the monthly quote but if you start that that personal insurance plan when you are young and healthy and when it's cheap and you just get a plan that you know 30 year or whatever that is. And you're going to talk about term and hole and all that kind of stuff here in a minute. But you do the smart thing when you're young, when it's, when it's cheaper for you, even if you're covered at the company, it's just going to save you that headache of, you know, 20 years down the line, the company's broke your back and you're, you know, you're going in and saying, 
mm, my health is all right right now. How much is it going to cost me? Just doesn't make a whole bunch of sense. So, uh, I appreciate that explanation. Uh, the other two things, uh, that you said that people overlook. So we've got life insurance. What else? So the next thing that people overlook is disability insurance. Um, what I like to call paycheck insurance. Now, disability insurance is extremely important especially for people like us, you know, bloggers, podcasters, independent agents, real estate agents, you know, yoga instructors, anybody that works any job that has anybody that depends on them and that needs to eat should have disability insurance. Uh, and the reason I say that, and it sounds funny, but here's the thing. Dis- disabilities happen more from sickness than they do from actual accidents. So while most people think that, you know, hey, I have a desk job, I don't really need disability insurance, it's not true. You know, getting sick can disable you for definitely longer than 30 days, uh, much faster than someone can have an accident that would disable them for 30 days. So the way disability insurance works is basically you have set time periods where if you're disabled, the insurance company will pay out either a lump sum or They'll pay out a monthly rate every single month for a specific amount of benefit time. So as as easy as I can put it, if you make five hundred dollars a week or a thousand dollars a week, if that money stops coming in, for most of us, that's everything. You know, that's rent, that's you know, cable, you know, that's TV, that's you know, car, you know, that's credit card bills, it's pretty much everything. Thing. It's food on our table for us and our family. If that money stopped coming in because you were hurt or you got sick and you were unable to work, you could pretty much lose everything. Mm-hmm. And in a very short amount of time, you know, most of us, you know, n- most of us are living paycheck to paycheck. You know, that's just the the straight up truth is, is it is what it is. Most of us live paycheck to paycheck. If that paycheck stops coming in, our life changes immediately. You know, within 30 days, we're getting, you know, if we live in an apartment and eviction notice, you know, if we live in a home, you know, three months, we're going to get we're going to get evicted. You know, two to three months, your car is going to get towed if you're not paying that bill. You know, you know, within, you know, what, two or three days of not eating, you know, you might not be here for that much long. So mm-hmm. those things happen. They happen every single day. You know, it's not something that's, you know, exclusive to any, you know, anyone. It just happens to everybody. You know, no, nobody can get around it. So. It's very important to get this, what I call paycheck insurance, because it protects your paycheck. If you make a thousand dollars a week, this, this coverage, most of the time it can give you $700 a week. It's not a thousand, but it's not zero, right? Mm -hmm. And that's very important because if you're put into a position where you are disabled at work and you can't work for 30 days and that coverage kicks in, you're feeling good. But if you just get disabled and you can't go to work, Eventually, at some point, your benefit days are going to go away. You know, your vacation days are going to get used up. Your sick days are going to get used up. Your, you know, personal days are going to get used up. And now you're just on, you know, FMLA, which is a Family Medical Leave Act. You're just on that. You're not going to get fired from your job, but you're not going to be making any money. You're not going to have an income. So those things are very important. Uh, at, at the end of the day, it's a very simple type of coverage. It's based on your type of employment your annual income and how much, how, you know, how long you want the benefit period to be. Some places say, Hey, you know, you have to be disabled for 90 days before we'll pay out. Some places say, Hey, you have to show proof that you will be disabled for a year before we just pay a lump sum payment of, you know, your annual income. So it's, it's, it's a lot of different products out there, but you need to have something because at the end of the day, if you go out there and you get hurt or if you become sick and it disables you to a point where you're unable to do your job and you can no longer work and you can no longer provide an income for your family. What are you going to do? You know, if, if, you know, Joe, you know, if something happened to your voice and you couldn't talk and do the podcast, you know, what, you know, what, what would you do if you couldn't talk? You know, talking is an important part of your business. What if you couldn't talk for six months? You know, how do you, you know, if, if, you know, that's a prime source of your income, how do you make that money? How do you keep things going until that voice gets better? Right. So that's how you have to look at it, you know, protecting yourself. You know, if, 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 you know, I write a lot, you know, if both of my hands, you know, stop working, you know, that would be an issue, you know, and, and I would need something to cover that if that happened to me. And that's where your disability or 
paycheck insurance comes in. Just think of it as insurance for your paycheck on your job. If they can't pay you based on you being disabled, the insurance company is going to pay you. It's, it's pretty much that straightforward. Okay. Okay. Now, is that kind of like what companies like Affleck provide or is that something different? No, that's definitely like what uh, Affleck uh, provides. Affleck is um, definitely one of the top places out there that provides it. Um, and all those commercials are pretty funny and pretty straightforward. But yeah, Affleck is a one of the carriers that offers it. Perfect. All right. Yeah. So just for a frame of reference for folks with the, I mean, the commercials are great, but it, it is nice when you have an insurance company that's there that's just making sure like, oh, you got bills due? I got you. So love exactly. it. All right. So what's number three? What else are we are we not taking care of in the in the world of insurance for our families? The next thing that we're not taking care of is dental coverage. Dental coverage is extremely important. And I am making I'm saying dental coverage and not dental insurance for a specific reason. So there are two different things that you can get when you're looking when you're looking at dental. Okay. You can either get dental insurance or you can get a dental plan. The reason why I usually don't recommend dental insurance is for a few things. One, they always have an annual maximum. Okay. So what that means is that if you, your dental insurance plan is going to say you have a $1,500 annual maximum. That means that if you have, let's say a root canal and you need a crown, you're pretty much almost there for that annual maximum. Mm-hmm. Once you reach fifteen hundred dollars in that year, you no longer are covered for any type of benefit. So that's the first problem. The second problem are waiting periods. Most dental insurance products have waiting periods for things like root canals or oral surgery, you know, getting you know, your teeth pulled or getting fill ins. Those things are very important. And most of the time when people Unfortunately, most of us aren't getting our six month checkups like we should. And we really only go to the dentist when there is an issue. Well, if you just got your insurance, it's, it's not going to help if it's insurance. And also dental insurance is pretty expensive um, on a month to month basis in regards to what's covered and what's not covered. So usually I stay away from dental insurance. Um, dental plans, on the other hand, are the complete opposite. They have no annual maximums. They do have a network that you have of, of dentists that are part of it. Now, most of these networks are huge, you know, hundreds of thousands of different dentists. So, you know, it's, it's not a thing of you won't be able to find anyone. It's that these specific dentists are in this network for these specific savings. Um, there are lots of savings in dental plans versus dental insurance. Along with no waiting period, you can you know, use coverage immediate from day one. Most of the policies go anywhere from, you know, nine dollars a month all the way up to, you know, for an individual to, you know, maybe I think 10 or 11 or sometimes 15 dollars a month for a whole family. So they're not that expensive. And when it comes to oral health, I think that a lot of us can look past it as important, but it's so important. Um, dental health and dental hygiene, you know, or lack thereof has been related to all types of heart disease, all types of uh, viruses that we can obtain just from not doing things as simple as, you know, brushing our teeth, flossing and going and getting a checkup. I'm going to tell you my experience that I had with dental and why it became a big part for me. Um, my dental profile was like messed up. Like I had really bad teeth <laughs> and um, I didn't realize how bad, you know, my teeth were until you know I went to the dentist one day and the dentist told me all of these things, you know, and it gave me a list and it was like, oh, it's going to cost fourteen thousand dollars to fix all my teeth issues without braces. This is not including braces. This is just like, you know, you know, fill ins and, you know, all the things they needed to do to correct my teeth. So I took my insurance, you know, I gave them my insurance card and they came back and they were like, OK, well, these this is a list of things that aren't covered by your insurance. And then here's a list of things that are going to make you reach your annual maximum. So I pretty much would have still ended up paying the full amount. Um, I started looking around and I found dental plans um, at the time. I think the company was Assurant. Um, I think they became Sun Life Financial, but um, Assurant Dental 
um, is one of the carriers that I had dealt with back then. Um, and now I think one that we work with is called Carrington, which is really good as well that we have. But um, Assurant, I, I, I took that dental plan to the same office because they were part of the network. And they looked at me and they said, OK, so now you only owe around four thousand dollars with this discount plan and we can get started today. So huge, huge savings. I mean, I saved so much money and I went in there and I went into the doctor's office and getting your teeth fixed, it really changes your, your life. And a lot of people don't realize that when people look at you and they look at your smile, that smile is a very big part on one, if they want to do business with you, you know, if they're going to interact with you. Um, they, they did this study and, um, I think it was the United Kingdom. I can't or Britain. I, I can't remember exactly where it was, but this guy walked around and he showed people pictures of the same lady with bad teeth and with straight teeth. Mm-hmm. And almost everyone said that the the lady with bad teeth had poor education, had a low a low job, and that they wouldn't want to deal with them. The same person, same exact person, just showed her with a different smile. And that just goes to show you that someone's perspective of you and how they see you uh, is very important to anything in life, especially with trying to grow a business like most of, you know, most of us are doing on here. If we have a business, your smile is very important. Your, you know, how you come across is your breath stink. You know, that's a very big thing, you know, so dental hygiene is extremely important, but getting a dental plan is important as well, just because dental plans are more affordable on a month to month basis. They have no waiting periods. They have no annual maximums and they give you maximum savings. And some of them can add vision to it. Um, with Carrington, we actually, um, they just added LASIK coverage. So it's a pretty neat benefit um, for people who want to get LASIK. It gives uh, discounts on that and also braces. Um, it gives discounts on braces as well. Oh, that's really nice. And you know, man, so the other component to this, uh, it's one thing for those of us who are hard headed and don't want to go to the dentist. I was there for a really long time until I had, um, like a major issue crop up when I was overseas. I was in Afghanistan. One of my teeth actually just broke off from an old, old feeling that had been on there since I was a kid. And it just, I won't go into the details, but the whole thing just basically broke off. Um, and I needed to go to the dentist to obviously get that fixed and crown, but I did have a dental plan at that time. I had started, you know, my first corporate job with a company that had these great insurance and plans and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, it was nice to be able to go in and it's like, oh, you got this crown, but then also let's, uh, you know, let's do this deep cleaning over here and a deep cleaning over there. Oh, you got fillings here. You got fillings there. And mm-hmm. it was like a series of several months in a row that like yep. every few weeks I was just back in the dentist's office and getting things fixed. But when the whole thing was over with, I mean, you, you're right. The way that you feel, the confidence that you have is hugely different. The way people look at you, the way you feel when you're eating things. I mean, you don't even notice how uncomfortable sometimes it is to eat stuff or you mm-hmm. get into a habit of only eating on one side one because side. you know you got a tooth that's sensitive <laughs> over here and it just becomes yep. a way of life. And you don't realize how big it is to just be able to like, I don't care. I'm left side, right side. I don't care. I'm, I'm taste buds of getting all this food today. Right. Um, it, it's huge to be able to do that. But then also for those of us who have small kids, you know, we got, mm-hmm. we got four kids in my house. And so as those teeth start coming in mm-hmm. around the same time, they start falling out and you got the, the grown teeth coming in and you know, to be able to take your kids to the dentist early and get them in a, in a positive regimen dealing with the dentist, make sure that they have, if they need braces, they get them. If they need fillings, they've got them. And, and having your kids have a healthy, um, a healthy smile is huge. Being able to do that with having, uh, you know, having a really good dental plan because it's important. If, if they don't get started off right, I mean, now you're looking at a lifetime of, of just, you know, their, their teeth not being cared for, for decades potentially before yes. they get to where we are. You're absolutely right. There was a, um, documentary, uh, that I watched and it's called, um, the truth about your teeth. And it was created by the BBC. Um, and basically, you know, over there in Europe, their, their health, their, their dental hygiene is way different from ours, right? It's like, much worse. Like they, they put like the, the whitest teeth 
in the United Kingdom, right? And then they put, uh, they, we, we have like three more shades in the United States than they can even reach. Oh, wow. Now, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. But if anyone wants to check that out, it's on the BBC. It's called, you know, the truth about your teeth. It will show you that, you know, if you don't take care of your dental hygiene, it can change it completely. You know, for some people, it completely ruined their whole lives, you know, and just like you said, you know, after, after I got my braces and I got all my stuff done, you know, it, it, you know, I floss more and, um, eating on it <laughs> and just one side of the mouth. That was funny when you said that because it took me a long time. I think it took like six months before I was comfortable enough to eat on both sides of my mouth because I did have the issue of that one tooth that I knew oh, I can't really eat over there. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you don't realize, like you said that, Hey, you know, your whole life changes. You're able to eat better. You're able to eat easier. You're able to smile more. You know, some people, when they have bad teeth, they smile and they cover their mouth and they don't even realize it. And I think I used to do that. Um, so that's a, a, a big thing. Very big thing. Absolutely. Well, man, I, I really appreciate you sharing those three things with us, you know, and as a recap, folks, you know, get the life insurance, get that paycheck insurance. And, and, and get a good dental plan uh, for yourself and especially if you got a family and, and, and you got kids that you're trying to raise and make sure that, that they get to have a healthy smile. Uh, I want to turn a corner now and I, I want to go into the next key component of this education. So, guys, this is going to be a little bit longer show today because JC is bringing some noise that we need. We absolutely need to hear it. And I'm not even saying just for the black community, but adults like we grown adult people, we know, y'all know who you are. I know I'm one of them. We make these decisions every day and we don't think anything of it, but, but we're, we're missing out, right? Or, or we're missing some information that we need to make better decisions for our family. So I appreciate you taking the time to share this stuff with us. I want to go now back to the topic of life insurance because there are so many different products out there, but the two main different types of products that people hear about are term life insurance and whole life insurance and, and the different ways that those things work. Um, but just like anything else, if you're not in the industry, if you don't do this every day, you probably don't have a really good understanding of, of what the differences are, what the pros and cons are. And so that's why we have JC here. So I'm going to hand it back to you, brother. If you can just tell us a little bit about those differences between term life, whole life, and kind of the recommendations that you have for people when it comes to those those types of policies. Absolutely, man. Uh, so uh, this is the question I always get. What is the difference between whole life and term life? It's a very good question. And the reason it's a very good question is because most people, when they're researching insurance, they find out that there are two types of insurance that every other type of insurance falls up under whole life and term life. OK, now whole life, whole life is a policy that's going to last for your whole life. Your entire life, no matter how long you live, it's going to last for your whole life. As long as you pay those monthly premiums, your policy will be in force. Whole life policies are always going to be more expensive on a month to month basis than term life insurance. That's because of two things. One, they know that they're going to have to pay out when you die, no matter what, because it's for your whole life. And number two is because they have to pay out what's called a cash value into the policy. Now, cash value is basically whenever you pay a monthly premium, if your policy is $50 a month and you have a whole life policy, whenever you pay that $50 into that whole life policy, the insurance company is mandated that they have to put a percentage of it towards the value, the cash value that you're building into your own policy. So eventually you can actually borrow against whole life insurance policies. Um, but while a lot of places, you know, push that you push that, you know, idea out there that, hey, you know, you can get this life insurance policy and you can borrow against it if anything ever happens. Um, truthfully, for the amount of policy that you can afford and that most of us can afford, the cash value in that policy won't be much to borrow against. And also it wouldn't be worth borrowing against. Uh, so the the big things for whole life to to remember, like what is whole life is that it's basically simply life insurance that is going to last for your whole life. OK, OK, up. Term life insurance. Term life insurance gets tricky just because people don't understand what the term actually means. OK, so term insurance is life insurance that lasts for a specific term length, meaning that if you die outside of that term length, there is no coverage unless you renew the policy. So 
most term limits are five year, 10 year, 15, 20, or 30. Those are your average term limits. Some carriers won't offer five, some won't offer 30, but in general, those are the, the term limits. And what this means is that if you have a five year term policy, you're covered immediately from day one. But however, if you were to pass away during that five year term, it's going to pay out 100% of the policy. If you don't renew the policy after five years, the policy won't pay out. It doesn't exist anymore. OK, now most of us are probably wondering, why would you want a term policy? Well, first things first, they're extremely more affordable than whole life insurance. OK, right now I have a I have two point five million dollars in life insurance and I have I pay about one hundred and fifty hundred and fifty dollars a month. Mm -hmm. OK, and that's for about two point five million dollars in life insurance. Now. The same amount of life insurance and hope for whole life. Just but just put it like this. I just recently did a quote. Five hundred thousand dollars in whole life insurance coverage for me would be four hundred and fifty six dollars a month. That's not happening. Mm -hmm. No, thank you. Right? Yeah, that's a car payment. <laughs> that's a car payment. <laughs> not only that, but the term product that I have is for 30 years. Now. Let me explain to you why terms are important, guys. The term life insurance, the term lengths are created for your life. So someone who, let's say you have, you know, your kid is going to school and you pay for their loan, right? You, you, you signed off on their loan and, you know, you want to make sure if something happens, you know, you get a term policy on them for five years. They're only going to be in college for four. But hey, if you get a five-year term on them, now that investment is secured. Then let's look at another scenario. Ten years down the line, your car is going to be paid off. You just got fifty thousand dollars in in coverage for ten years. That car is going to be paid off. You're good to go if anything happens to you during that time. Let's push it out even more. Twenty year term. For twenty years, your life is going to change. You're going to have more family members. You're going to have, you know change jobs. Maybe your income changes. All of these things in twenty years, you're not going to need as much money now than you would if something were to happen to you, you know, today. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the same with a 30 year term. I always tell people, you know, when you're looking at these term lengths, you just have to look at them and say, hey, in 20 years from now, my kids will be 20. In 30 years from now, my kids at least are going to be 30. Right. So mm -hmm. their financial uh, burden that will be required from them if something were to happen to you is going to be extremely low. Right. And, you know, in 30 years, my house will be paid off, you know, because the average home is a 30 year mortgage. So. If you have a 30 year term from two for two million dollars, then hey, in 30 years, nothing happens to you. Mortgage is gone. You're good to go. So that's how you want to look at term. They're more affordable. It's way more coverage for the amount of coverage, that, you know, that you're getting. Um, You know, you can policies for like nineteen dollars a month for seven hundred thousand dollars in coverage. You know, it's not expensive. You know, um, life insurance in general is nowhere near as expensive as most of us think it is. Um, we definitely overestimate the cost of insurance, and that's why most of us don't get it. When we actually get quoted for it, we're shocked. We're like, what? Hold on, I can get this for that? And it's like, yes, it's not that expensive. So when you when it comes to term life insurance, you're going to get the most coverage at the most affordable rate for a time period that's necessary for your specific lifestyle. So that's why um, when it comes to whole life and term life insurance, most personal finance experts and uh, just me from what I've seen, the average person is going to want, want to go with a term policy. Whole life products are really for people, um, either people who have lots of money and are trying to do things like a, a product called single premium whole life, which is basically where they pay one lump sum premium. They might say, hey, I'm going to pay $200,000 for a $500,000 whole life policy. So they pay $200,000 in cash. They get that $300,000 benefit. or for someone who needs what's like a final expense policy, they're past the age of being able to get covered by traditional insurance carriers or they medically just cannot get covered. Um, whole life final expense policies usually have very, very low or very loose underwriting. They most of the time don't have height and weight chart restrictions. So those are only two times I recommend a whole life product. For everybody mm -hmm. else, term is going to definitely be the best option for them. That's awesome. I, I appreciate you sharing that. And, um, so I know, like for me, a few years ago, um, I spent a lot of time listening to uh, Dave Ramsey. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure you're familiar with him. 
uh, yes. the, the total money makeover guy. And he was always talking about uh, term life insurance to go with the whole debt snowball, you know, way to to uh, get rid of your debt and then, you know, just build wealth through your own paycheck. And, and his whole thing was, you know, if you if you get a 30 year term life policy, right, that covers, you know, whether it's 10 percent or 20 percent, as you're saying, of uh, or 200. Wait, what'd you say? 200% of your income, two times your income, 20 times your annual, income. 20 times your income. Yeah. So 20, yeah, 20 years worth of income. Um, if you get that now and then while you have that policy, that term life policy going and then you're, you're doing his whole debt, debt snowball thing and then you're paying off the, the debts and you're paying up for the kids school and then you're paying off the mortgages and then you're starting to, you know, invest however much of your money. I think he says like 15% of your income. And you over that 30 year period of time following his plan, by the time you get to the end of that term life insurance policy, you don't need life insurance anymore because, you know, you've you've uh, become debt free and then invested your way into being a millionaire anyway. And so, yeah, it's not a whole life policy, but you had insurance for the time that you needed it. And so now when that thing expires you're you're expected to be in a completely different place financially where um you know even if you follow it up with a new insurance plan you're not relying on that insurance to make sure that your family's not put into dire straits right it's it's a convenience for them at that point but it it got you the coverage that you needed such that if at any point in that 30 years something had happened to you your family wouldn't have to worry so that Absolutely. that makes a lot of sense to me Absolutely. Golden. Um, so man, those are, those are key points that we wanted to hit today and, and you knocked them out of the park. I think that a lot of people are going to get a lot of value out of, um, out of hearing this episode and learning everything that we have about insurance from you. So I want to start wrapping the show up by going into a few more questions, you know, directly about you and your experiences and, and what you're bringing to the market. Um, but, one last thing, one one last educational piece for for the entrepreneurs and folks out there. Uh, can you tell us, you know, what is the biggest challenge that you have faced in um, in your career or, or or elsewhere, and how did you overcome that challenge? What did you learn from it? Honestly, the biggest challenge that I've faced is myself. Um, growing up. Um, it's very easy, you know, especially in our, you know, in our community, it's very easy to get lost in the shuffle. You know, for me, I had to deal with growing up as a young black man, then a young gay black man. And those things were extremely hard to deal with when growing up and trying to figure out where I lived in society or, you know, where I was in society. And a lot of times I didn't feel like I could make it or that I belonged or that uh, the information was going to work for me. Um, and a lot of times we beat ourselves up, but it's important to remember that everybody is just a person. You know, that's something I had to tell myself and I had to learn that, that everybody is a person. That's something that my husband has taught me. Everybody is a person. And that means if anybody can do it, you can do it. There isn't I love that. anything that anybody can't do that you can't do if they can't do it then you can't do it but if they can do it you can do it because we're all people and we're all made up the same way you know no one you know nobody's a bird you know a bird person you know so they're the only one that can fly no it doesn't work that way everybody is just a normal person so anybody can do it so i was a big um a big part of a lot of my failures was was just me learning about myself and being afraid um, and from that, that's where the, a lot of the struggle came from, from, from my part. And once I was able to get past that, I was able to see success. So it's very important to, um, look at yourself as just like everyone else. Everybody is a person. They're just a person. You know, there's no difference between me and Jeff Bezos. The only difference is that what he stuck with his product. That's it. Work ethic, you know, very big on work ethic, you know. Because guess what? At the end of the day, work ethic will trump knowledge and education any day of the week. 
I, I, I live by work ethic. There's when, when I started insurance, it was so many people who could sell way better than me. I'm still not a good salesperson. But, <laughs> I, and, I, I think and, it's a bunch and, of people listening and, to this show that would disagree with and, that. <laughs> well, hey, I'm I'm telling you, I, I, I just wasn't my, my now my husband, he was great. He taught me a lot, but I, I, I just didn't have the passion for it. But what I did do, I worked 14 hour days for almost seven years straight. Nobody would outwork me. Nobody. And, the, and, and that consistency taught me all the traits necessary to get through things that seemed hard. You know, because, you know, I was listening the other day um, to um, the podcast about the search engine optimization. And I know a lot about search engine optimization. So it was a lot of good nuggets in that. And the one thing that a lot of people don't realize is that when they start, uh, when you go from insurance, you know, I'm dealing with maybe 100 no's a day. Right. Mm -hmm. And getting those no's, getting those no's, getting those no's, keeping that confidence to say, OK, the next one will be a yes. You know. That confidence came from saying, hey, we're all just normal people, you know, not just, oh, everyone hates me. No one likes me. You know, that type of, you know, defeatism, you know, getting past that was a very important part. And even now it's helping me when, you know, I go to do link building, um, when I have, you know, people respond to the email and say things like, oh, you know, don't email me again. You know, it's easy to think, you know, oh, that's it. You know, I'm doing it wrong. You know, no one will like me. But, you know, you send out 100 emails, you maybe get two people to say yes. So that so so th that part of the uh, self-sabotaging from my past um, mm -hmm. and then my idea of who I think I am and who I how I think I'm being viewed was a big part of uh, slowing me down. And, and moving past that is very important that we remember we're not our parents. We're not our past and that. Everybody is just a person. <laughs> so, you know, just just focus on your, you know, whatever you're good at and have 100 percent work ethic in it and you'll get there. Just don't give up. Absolutely. So uh, as you were talking, like you took me right back down my entire life's road with that. Um, I I suffered from that exact same thing of, you know, I've throughout my career. I have walked through so many different doors that took me in a different direction when it came to a career. And I'm talking about being, you know, from being a Marine Corps infantry guy to going into the Air Force and doing um, the type of work I do in the Air Force, which is different. Um, and then going from being in the Air Force to a corporate job where I'm expected to build training and then going from that to, you know, different new experiences and new doors that open for me to walk through. And every single time when I walk through that door, I walk through on the other side and I am I'm petrified that I'm surrounded by people who are smarter than me. They know more than me. They're better than me. There's no way I'm ever going to catch up with these people. And it's like, you can, you can tell yourself that and then just decide not to try. Um, or you can tell yourself that, and just decide, well, I'm just going to outwork everybody. You know, I'm going to I'm going to overcompensate with the work ethic because I know that these people are, quote unquote, smarter than me, at least in your own head. And then what you come to find out is that all that work you put in, all that education that you go out and get for yourself, you become the expert in a very short period of time. Mm -hmm. And now not only are you working harder than everybody else, but you also know more than them because you went out to find all the information that you thought you didn't have. And then eventually you just get to a point where you realize exactly what you just said. It's just like, we are all the same. The only difference thing that's going to differentiate me from that next person is how hard I'm willing to work for it. Man, that I love that message. I really appreciate that. Man. So next question, um, let's go back to simplyinsurance.co. You, you have spent all this time and energy educating us. And now I want to come back to your company. Um, talk to us about what you've got going on with simplyinsurance.co. What is, uh, what may be coming up new and how the people can, can come to your company to find you if they want to get themselves in line with this life insurance, the uh, disability insurance, the dental coverage and all the other types of coverage that you have here on the site, man, you, you are a connoisseur of the insurance game. It's all available. So let's, let's talk about that. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, like you said, uh, simply insurance.co, um, is very straightforward to get to us. Um, you can 
go to the site um, for all types of insurance. So we offer life insurance. We offer dental plans. We offer disability insurance. We also offer renter's insurance, pet insurance, homeowner's insurance, and accidental death insurance. Um, so you can get all those different types of coverages from our website. They all work the same. They all allow you to sign up online without the need of an agent. Um, what we do have coming up really soon is we're adding on another carrier. Uh, this insurance carrier is going to be offering products um, that have no exam and are immediate and instant approvals online. So that means no medical exams. You get a yes or no answer right then and there. Um, and they're, we're going to be uh, adding them within the next few weeks. Um, it's a new take on insurance, um, and it's even more, um, I guess, more technologically advanced than some of the carriers that we have on the site now. So that's something that we're um, looking out for is uh, no exam life insurance. And uh, once we have it, it'll be on the website as well. Um, so that's something that I think is very important Um to continue to grow, we'll continue to keep having more and more products on on our website. Um, it's simplyinsurance.co um, dot co. That's the place you want to go to uh, to reach us on Twitter. You can you know follow me on Twitter at jc underscore matthews one. Um, that is Matthews with two T's. Um, so at jc underscore matthews one. Um, if you want to follow me on Twitter. You can look me up by J.C. Matthews on LinkedIn. Um, so and uh, of course, J.C. Matthews on Facebook as well. Um, that's pretty much the best way to reach me. And that's pretty much what we're doing right now at Simply Insurance. Um, but guys, you know, if you need any type of insurance, just come to our just come to the website, simplyinsurance.co. If we have it, definitely check it out. Check out the carriers that we represent. We review every product that we have on the website. So. You know, if it's if we offer homeowners insurance, we have a review for it. So check out the review um, and, you know, learn. Um, we also have ultimate guides. If you want more information about term life insurance, um, the the once you go to the site, you go to our blog, you look at term life insurance. It's the ultimate guide to term life insurance. It's over 30,000 words. So, you know, anything you need to know about term life insurance, it's on that post. Love it. Love it. Absolutely. And um, just. A real quick question I want to ask you. Um, if there are people out here listening now who are looking at making a change in their career path, I mean, you told me you started out developing AI for video games, which one, we just skipped right over that. That's crazy. <laughs> but, but you got into the insurance game and you, and you became an agent. You started your own business. If there's anybody out there who, who may be looking and wondering, Hey, what is it going to take for me to get into this? I know you said it's easier than I think, but, uh, I'd like some guidance. Would it be okay for those folks to reach out to you as well through those same channels and, uh, and connect with you for some mentoring? Absolutely. Uh, feel free to reach out a hundred percent. Uh, just the only thing I don't recommend anybody doing is quitting their day job. Do not quit your day job when you start this. And that's with any business. Think of your think of your day job as your monthly lender when it comes to starting a business. Because when I tell you that business is just no different than anything, a pet, a child, the business might even want more. You know, it wants more. It wants all your money. Right. So it's going to when it's new, it's going to take everything from you. And if you're not prepared you know, and you do something uh, like I did, which, you know, I, I wish I wouldn't have when I first started, which was, you know, just stop, drop everything and go straight into that. Um, it, you know, it, it, it's not it, I wouldn't recommend it. Definitely keep your day job and do this as a you know, side hustle, as they're calling it, until uh, it makes more money or the same amount of money as your job. Love it. Perfect. All right, man. Well, that brings us to our final question here on the Bye Black Podcast. And you've been a long time listener, so you know what I'm about to ask. I know you got <laughs> something prepared for me. Um, so talk to us. What is your number one piece of advice for the Bye Black Podcast community? My number one piece of advice for the Bye Black Podcast community is to not think of ourselves and not think of yourself as a black owned business, but to think of yourself as a business owner. And the reason why I say that is because a lot of times it's easy for us to put ourselves into being the black owned business instead of being the business. 
when we look at forums like when I look at this podcast, I think it's a huge podcast. I think it's awesome. I think it's the best thing for us. And I think it's getting the word out there for black owned businesses. And I think that's extremely important. And I also on the same token think that it is important to push ourselves beyond what people consider or to push ourselves beyond what people think being a black owned business means. It means so much more than the color of our skins. To, it, it means so much more to be just a business owner because our ancestors were business owners. So being black and owning a business is not something that's new and nor is it something that I think sometimes we put so much weight behind it that we forget that this is who we originally were. So we have to push past that sometimes so that we can go to the next level. And, and, and I think that's my biggest piece of advice for us is to know who you are as an individual, because that's extremely important and, and, and push those values of your business into that. And the values of who you are go, should go into your business. But don't forget at the end of the day, along with being a black owned business owner, you're also a business owner. So don't be afraid to reach outside of the, you know, the, the norms because it's easy to think, Hey, you know, I'm black owned. I should only, you know, deal with black owned businesses. It's not necessarily true. You're black owned, but you're still a business and you're out there to grow your business. And I think that's an important thing that that everyone needs to know that's listening to this podcast. Don't stop, you know, don't stop being a business owner. Don't just be, you know, you don't have to pigeonhole yourself into just being a black business owner. You're both and use the resources for being both. You know, don't you know, don't be afraid to use all your resources. Love it. Love it. And you know what? That's so important. And I don't think we've talked about that on the show yet. But, um, you know, when it comes to business ownership in the black community, that was we had to be business owners because we couldn't shop anywhere else. Right. We we, we owned our businesses. And, and then, you know, after the 60s, which that's a whole episode in and of itself. With integration came the death of our businesses and then, you know, followed by 40 years of, of decimation of the community. We're not going to talk about all that. Right. But where we are now as as a, a new generation of business owners, you know, these skills which are, are in our blood, they have atrophied in the community. And yet they haven't atrophied in all these other demographic communities. And so if you have the ability to get mentorship, to get support, to get ideas to get, you know, a lot of the structure of what it what it means to run a successful business from other businesses and other business owners who are from different demographics, who can help you network with the right people, who can help you get resources from the right locations, who can get you in the doors that other black business owners may not be able to get you into. Uh -huh. Yes, as a business owner, use every single one of those resources to grow what you can. The The thing about you know, buy black and, and building this black community. It's not, we're going to shut ourselves off from everybody else. Mm -hmm. It's we're going to go out there. We're going to uh, excel. We're going to find all the information and the resources that we need. And we're going to get them from wherever we can get them. We're going to grow from where we can grow, but whatever we learn, we need to bring back and teach to somebody else in our community, yes. whatever connections we make, we need to come and take somebody in the community and make those connections with them outside of the community as well. We help each other integrate into the world of business ownership. I love that answer, man. I'm telling you right now, I feel like this is probably one of my favorite episodes and it hasn't even aired yet. You just, you brought the noises on this episode, JC, and I appreciate you sharing everything that you did with us today. Absolutely, man. Anytime, you know, anytime you, you know, want to talk about this, anything in insurance, you know, feel free to reach out to me. I'm always well, you know, willing to come back and, you know, talk about, you know, anything from business to insurance, you know, I'm, I, I'm here for it. even, even search engine optimization. I'm pretty good at that as well. So anything you want to talk about, feel free to reach out. I really appreciate you bringing me on here to talk to everyone and to be a part of this because I think it's important. Um, and I, I, I love your message. I love the message of the podcast. I love the uplifting nature of everything. And I love the idea of just, you know, of, of us coming together and, sh and showing that, Hey, we are all people. We are all equal. 
And, and, and I think that this, this podcast is putting us in that position of, like you said, taking the knowledge and, and, and as a community and bringing it back to ourselves so that we can grow even more so that our sons and our daughters can become business owners as well or run our, or run our business or make our businesses even better than we thought they ever could be. So I, I really love the podcast and I'm really, um, uh, thankful that you allowed me to be a part of it. Thank you so much, man. Well, hey, everybody, that is it. You guys have caught all kinds of knowledge today. This is episode 38 of the Buy Black Podcast in the books, and we will catch you guys the next time around. Wow. What did I tell you? Guys, it was nothing but knowledge being dropped the whole show. JC definitely brought the noise. Hey, I am going to highly encourage you to reach out to him at simplyinsurance.co. If you don't already have life insurance or if you're not happy with the, the life insurance that you already have or any other type of insurance, his company, he has a direct line to multiple different types of products that could work for you or your family. So reach out to him. That's simplyinsurance.co. Uh, additionally, if you're interested potentially in getting into the insurance business and you're wondering about how to become an agent, I know he quickly went over the process of getting licensed in the show. If this is something you think you might want to pursue, definitely also reach out to JC, find out more information from him about how you can get into the business. Uh, starting out as an agent in someone else's office, you can learn the trade and then you can eventually start your own business, be your own entrepreneur, running your own shop and working with multiple different companies the way that he is. So um, that is it for this episode, guys. I'm going to leave you with a one quick reminder. We are now absolutely open to advertising here on the Buy Black Podcast. If you have a business and you want to advertise to the audience, we're offering slots, this 30 second slots before the show, as well as the 60 second slot about midway through the show. These will be available if you want to reach out to me to find out about pricing. Just email me at Gerald at buyblackpodcast.com. That is me, Gerald at buyblackpodcast.com. Other than that, I thank you for joining me for another great episode. If you are not fired up to go out and tell somebody else about this program after hearing this episode, nothing's going to get you there. Help me continue to get this word spread. Help us continue to get more businesses put out into the forefront just like JC did today. And let's continue to grow this thing in 2018. Thanks for being out there. Love you guys. And we'll catch you in the next episode.